Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Marduk, and last time we were checking out the Trilobite Cave. Now, there is actually one thing that I forgot to do that I want to make sure we make the point of doing before we get too engrossed in exploring that Trilobite Cave there, and that is, let's head out for just a minute, and I want to make sure that we go back to Gosnor, actually, of all places, because... If we do that, and of course continue to ignore the giant spaceship that is hovering above Canonia, and we speak to High Priest Galavar over here. Bravo, bravo, and huzzah. Here the conquering hero comes. I knew you could save us from those zombies, Marduk. Your father would have been very proud of you indeed. So glad am I of your success, but I can't let you walk away unrewarded. Yeah, Lord generally doesn't approve of gift giving. But what does he care about what his priests do? So here, I'd like to give you this amulet. It's not much, but it's better than nothing. Now, I won't ramble on at you for ages like some other people probably would. So go now. Continue being a hero. You could well be the next social fox. I'd certainly count on it. May you go with Yalort's blessings and mine. Thank you. Let's take a look at what exactly it was that he gave us. It is the Yalortian Amulet, which actually is dark, elemental, which is a little alarming. Um, High Priest Calabar, are you sure that this dragon that you are worshipping is a kind and benevolent one? Maybe not. But it gives one defense, two magic defense, so that's pretty solid, a little bit of a mixture of both. In the past, we've seen three, like the Moonstone Ring and the Onyx Ring are the things that I'm thinking of in particular. So it's just a little more well-balanced than those defensively. Green Lightning, an offensive skill for what looks like Vern, as well as plus two spirit, not bad, and a little bit of dark resistance. That seems pretty solid. It is, of course, something that, based on how it gives that Green Lightning skill, we would probably want to put on Vern. But at least temporarily, we could throw it in on someone else if there was a spot on the accessory front that we feel is not terribly meaningful, like the gauntlet on Dugan is probably worn out its welcome. Otherwise, I think Zack is still learning. Oh no, he has mastered antibody. In which case, the snake stone, maybe that's worth getting rid of. Granted, this does also give plus two spirit, which is not really something that is relevant for Zack. It is most relevant for Vern, Emla, and Dugan, at least for Spirit Blade. So, on second thought, yeah, I think we can get rid of the gauntlet. Because the strength is useful too. But this is better defensively and also gives the Spirit, which is not quite as good as strength for Dugan, because all of Dugan's attacks, besides Spirit Blade, get boosted by strength, whereas only Spirit Blade gets boosted by Spirit. We actually, technically speaking, we go like this, I believe. Yes, we'll show up on the other side of the Eastern Glens. And it's been a while since we last encountered some ghouls, but I suppose there's nothing wrong in, well, beating up some guys that are quite overpowered at this point. So we'll take him out. And we'll make our way back into the Trilobite Cave and push on a little bit further and see what lies ahead. That is, actually, the last skill, or the last battle that Marduk needs, Master Bright Eyes. So if we wanted to, we could opt to move this on to someone else. Might be a good idea. Let's double check. Is Dugan done with Vim? He is, so we could put it on Dugan. I think having Dugan have resistance to blindness could be very significant. As well as Zack. Actually, I think we want to prioritize Zack. Um, and then Dugan, have you done antibody yet? You've not. Okay. Okay. I know that Marduk has done Vim already. I remember that. Emila? Could you use this, perhaps? Probably. Yes. I do like the Lapis Lily on her. I suppose it just gives magic defense and... Well, the Silence and Curse Resistance is significant for a spellcaster, I think, so... Long term, it would probably be best to put this back on Emila, but let's at least level this up for now. Make sure that she gets Vim, and let's throw this on here, 
and let's take a check at our reactions and passive skills here to make sure we aren't missing something. Because magic defense, I'm pretty sure we ought to have had that on earlier and we might have missed it. So Marduk doesn't have any new passives there, but I think just about everyone else will. And as for right now, Dugan, I don't think we're at risk of getting zombified by trilobites. So hopefully we're okay there. Granted, not going to stop us from trying to learn the anti-zombification skill on Emila. That one's a little more in anticipation of hopefully being able to avoid that in the future. And we do still have somewhere the Geo Jacket, right? And I'm assuming we were likely waiting for someone to finish something on the passive side of things before doing this. Like, might this be a good opportunity for Marduk to use it? If we wanted to get the magic defense reaction done, is Zack finished with his reactions on the bandit letter, though? He is not. E okay, so we really want to get this on someone as soon as possible. So for that reason, it was not great. And we took a little while to get that passive equipped on Marduk. So he might be next in line. Depends whether Marduk finishes first or Zack finishes first. But anyways, we'll move on. I believe that Emla definitely has it mastered. Dugan may as well. I know he's I'm pretty sure we had him start with it. However, I don't remember if we had him go all the way until he mastered it or if we passed it off midway through. That may have been the case. We could double check. But I definitely remember the deliberately attack the enemy that is the highest level here. I do remember that we deliberately put the Geo Jacket on Dugan to begin with because he is Earth Elemental and therefore starts with some Earth Resistance. And we were talking about how when you pair that with his starting 20 Earth Resistance and the, what is it, 120 or 110% resistance on the Geo Jacket plus the 50% additional resistance when you use the passive skill and he had some absurd amount of resistance there. Now we could potentially opt to boost here, just to get Dugan closer to mastering that ability, which I think is not a bad idea. Oh, I missed that reaction. Now it becomes a bad idea because, well, our enemies will get the chance to attack us. Granted, we were talking about how we need some reactions. I don't think they were physical reactions that we needed on Dugan or Marduk. I think it's Zack who needs the physical one, so... That's still not ideal at some point. However, we may want to deliberately have people attack us just so that we can get those reactions mastered. You guys were saying that you have several ideas as to where the best places to grind out those reactions and levels and get loot might be. And it seems like one good thing about leveling in low level areas is that you may not be getting much experience. However, you could deliberately just pass turn, pass turn, pass turn, and allow your enemies to hit you, hit you, hit you over and over again. And because they're low level enemies, that means they're not gonna be dealing much, if any, damage. And it's a great opportunity to quickly level up your defensive reactions. Especially if you're in an area where you know that your enemies are likely to use the physical attacks if you're trying to master your physical reactions, or magic if you're looking to level up your magic reactions. So this is probably not the place to do that. I mean, we could do it to a certain extent, preferably when we're close to a save crystal that we can heal up, because these guys are high enough level that they are still capable of dealing damage. Whereas if we went to, say, like, Soup Wood, back where we were in chapter one, then presumably the enemies would not be hitting us nearly as hard and might be able to avoid taking any damage at all, even if we were to have them hit us time after time. So there's seven chests in here. This will be a pretty big area for us. Let's make sure we hit all of them. And I thought that was gonna loop around to this one up here, but I was mistaken. And I don't remember as to whether these enemies get higher level in here. They may have. Because remember, we used one key to get in through the initial door, 
which theoretically we could have done earlier on. Let's deliberately attack the strongest one here. And so I think that may have been a reason for why the enemies in the first room were a little bit lower level, whereas because we needed a subsequent key to get through that second door that we just went through, that meant that we would not be able to access this area until later on in the game, even though we're doing all this in one round here. But for that reason, I think that we may find that these guys are a little bit stronger, even if they're the same type of enemy. If we were paying close attention to the monster level, I think the minimum we're going to see here looks like it might be similar to the maximum that we saw in the previous area. And we do have a Mind Crystal currently equipped on, I believe it's Emila. We do. And they're... they're okay. Uh, at this stage in the game, obviously we, we do already have one. So it's not like it's urgent that we pick up another. However, if we have anyone who has not yet mastered plus 10% MP, which may be the case, then it might be an opportunity to make that happen. Zack may not have. He has not. But I'd argue it's not terribly significant for him because, well, he doesn't have any skills that use MP. At least not at the moment. I feel like I totally forgot to check. Yes, I did totally forget to check Zack's reactions. So, uh, <laughs> put on bright eyes there. I saw on the inventory that we equipped that new accessory, but I did not recall us actually equipping the skill from it, so there we go. Missed a couple of battles with it, but should still be able to pick that up relatively quickly. And that is something that we want Dugan to learn next, so that is something that we have a bit of a cue for, if you will. We are still seeing some level 8 enemies, so I suppose... Perhaps... They are still close to, if not the same level as the previous area. It was a theoretical statement. Theoretical argument, I suppose. Maybe it was incorrect. It's not paying close enough attention to know for certain. As for which direction we want to go in first, it looks like we ought to go here and maybe up to a chest over here before we get into this fight, though. And again, target the big one with Zack. Making it a little more likely for Emma to be able to take everyone out here. And that is enough for Marduk there, I believe. Yeah, Marduk to level up. Which may be enough for him to pick up a new reaction point. Let's double check. So, Marduk. 11. Is that a difference maker? He may have had 10 before, he may have already had 11, but either way, that's not going to allow him to equip anything that he had not already equipped. And it looks like up there in the top left corner might have been the next door for us to go through. However, we certainly have plenty of loot here still remaining. So, even if that is the case, well, I suppose let's check it out just to confirm. There are two directions we can go up here. Let's see... Oh no, more chests. Phoenix down. Actually, Zack doesn't have any at the moment. And that is something that we've used, I believe, only once to resurrect, I think it was Marduk during the World Saviors fight. But it is something that we will find very useful in the future. For both its intended purpose, or at least its straightforward purpose, of resurrecting a fallen ally with half HP, but also for a little bit of a gimmicky purpose as well that we have, I don't believe, explored just yet. We've done something similar to it. Okay, yes, that is the way up, but let's make sure that we check out all the chests first. I do expect us to find some decent loot in here. What with this being a bonus area, the primary bonus area. In it, of course, we do need to get all those trilobite keys, which are not necessarily the easiest things to do in order to get access to this location. I suppose you could maybe make the case that those other areas that we went to previously, like the area after Morik in particular, could potentially qualify as bonus areas as well, seeing as how you don't need to go there. They are purely optional. They have 
powerful boss encounters as well with good loot. And honestly, the first time I played through Bardek Chapter 2, I did not even realize that the Trilobite Cave or the Zombie Dragon or anything really after the major boss fights existed. Didn't realize the Geo Jacket was a thing. So it does make a big difference if you can make it over there and pick up all that stuff. Hopefully you're starting to see that. We have seen the Geo Jacket come in a lot of handy, at least in that Moric fight where on one or two occasions, people were going to get hit by powerful earth elemental attacks and they actually healed rather than got damaged. Also got the new and powerful sword for Dugan. And hopefully we can continue to accumulate such items. And even if you consider the hidden areas. Ooh, and trilobite armor. A suit of medium armor made from trilobite scales? It absorbs water damage as HP and boosts the wearer's max HP too. Now we were just talking about the Geo Jacket, and guess what? Here is the water version. It gives five defense, which is actually pretty solid. It's medium armor, so unfortunately that does mean that Emla is not able to equip it. However, everyone else we have in our party right now could, including Vern. It gives the Resist Water passive ability, which is very similar to the Geo Jacket's Resist Earth, just as water instead of earth, and absorbs 10% water damage, similar to how the Geo Jacket absorbs 20% earth, so slightly less, but still heals you when you take water damage, and a little bit of HP on top of that, so it is extremely strong as well, so this is another item that we definitely want to prioritize, getting on as many people as possible, and mastering that resist earth ability. How close are we getting to people wrapping up with these skills. Dugan actually does not have anything he's working on with his current chest plate. So, tell you what, he's working on antibody. However, I don't think that's as important. I think we definitely prioritize. I think he's done resist earth. Let's just confirm. He has. So let's get the resist water on him with the new and powerful trilobite armor. Awesome. Okay. We could theoretically put purity on, or bone mail, for the purity skill on someone else. However, that is another passive ability, and it seems like, for the most part, it's the passive abilities that we are most in competition for. People just don't quite have enough RP to work on as many as we want them to work on simultaneously. So we'll take a little bit of patience here, and all the more reason why, on some occasions, it will be meaningful to make sure that you go into some of those areas where you might do a little bit of additional grinding. So on this occasion, like I was saying, I think we get rid of antibody. I don't think that's as important. And unfortunately, uh, yeah, it may mean that we are going with almost resist water exclusively. We can just barely squeeze in agility as well. Let's just make sure that we aren't losing anything else in the process. He actually, it's not mastered his offensive reaction yet, Dugan. If several magic defense reactions that he has not mastered yet, so theoretically, when he is done with the Trilobite armor, there are still more chest plates that he could use. I think Burns is one that is giving the generic minus a certain percentage, I think it's 10% magic damage. And in addition to that, there is the amulet that Marduk is using right now, the Fire Pendant, that nobody has mastered yet. But it is the minus 50% fire damage reaction, which is really strong if you know that you're going to go against an enemy that deals fire damage. However, we just haven't been getting hit enough by spells in general for much of anyone to master their magic defensive reactions. That's probably, if anything, what I would prioritize doing at this stage if we were to do any of that committed leveling up and grinding. Because that is going to be significant at some point, I suppose. As for this chest, we have a Ring of Vitality plus two. This little ring, set with a green gem, magically enhances its wearer's physical endurance. So we've seen Rings of Vitality before. Here's a normal one. However, we 
should go to... Whose inventory did we put it in? Here it is. Let's put them right next to each other. So, a normal Ring of Vitality gives plus one Vitality, plus ten HP. Ring of Vitality plus two, basically, twice as good. So I was saying earlier how I'm not a huge fan of these because it seems like they're mostly just placeholder accessories that, sure, they might fill in a small gap in terms of a character's weaknesses. If a character is relatively squishy, you might want to put a Ring of Vitality on there to make them just a little bit less of a pushover. But Ring of Vitality plus two, any of these plus two types of rings, maybe that's just enough to make a little bit more of a point of putting them on. I still think that since we are working primarily on mastering abilities first, that if we do want to put those on, it'll be a little while until we do. Here we have a body crystal. I'm actually not sure we've had any of these yet. They may have been available in one of the shops previously, but we've seen the mind crystal. This is the body crystal, which is basically the physical variant of it. So it gives plus 10% HP rather than plus 10% MP. So probably more useful for people who are inherently a little tankier because that additional 10% will be that much higher in terms of a raw HP increase. However, I suppose you could also make the case that covering someone's weaknesses, like Emla having the lowest HP at the moment, that might be something good to put on her so that she's, again, not as easy for our opponents to take down. And it gives a little bit of vitality, a little bit of defense, a little bit of additional flat HP, that plus 10, and a little bit of resistance to the more physical in nature status effects, which is, I suppose, another reason why putting them on more of our melee type of characters, such as Marduk, Dugan, Zack, and Vern, might be arguably a little preferable to putting it on Emila. But we'll bear that in mind. As for can we squeeze this in on anyone who has room for that passive reaction? That's going to be tough. Does anyone have four to spare? Theoretically, we could get rid of plus 10% MP on Marduk. Or Bright Eyes. Or, yeah, Marduk's actually not too busy from a passive standpoint. So that does probably make some sense. We don't need the Lapis Lily on him anymore. Let's make sure that we put, instead of MP, let's put HP. And absolutely actually gives you the 10% MP. We could opt to put this on someone who has not yet mastered it. However, I think that everyone except for Zack has. We just established this. And I was just saying that it's not terribly significant for Zack, so maybe we just reserve this for Emla. Because I do like having it on her, like I was saying, for the silence and curse resistance. And as for this area, we actually have now gotten all of the chests in here. Let's carry on. That was just an area with the chest in it. This is the way back. And as you can see, the Trilobite Caves, relatively large, there are several different areas in here. And pretty strong loot across the board. Some things that, like I was saying, I think it is possible to pick up that body and mind crystal, however, Trilobite armor is fantastic. It is very similar to the Geo Jacket in terms of its power and its usability. Granted, we've definitely found more enemies that deal earth damage than we found enemies that deal water damage, given how more the uh, primary foe that we found ourselves going up against is earth elemental. But that's not to say that there are water enemies as well. So we'll head on up and out of this area of the Trilobite Cave. Once we encounter these guys, that is. This one significantly stronger than the others. Looks like Zack is very close to leveling. Might be enough here. Not quite. But he's getting close. We'll give him a few fish scales as well for good measure. And those better potions, they add up. Those are not bad. I believe this was the way out. Now, granted, I think this is probably a good place for us to wrap up this video. And in the next one, we'll check out what exactly is on the other side as we delve even further into the Trilobite Caves.